Okay, I think I'm ready to start with my um, charcoal pencil. I'm looking for a better point than that one. So now I'm going to start really mapping things out. And then maybe after that I'm going to add some white to it. Now one thing which I should have said, which I just remembered, is that when you're doing a drawing, you have to be able to see if that cloth is straight. And think of this, if you take something and you pin it up on top, what's gonna to happen with all the gravity that pulls down the, the, the cloth and then brings it down, it's gonna slightly ta taper outward so that you don't get fooled. Remember, you don't wanna be fooled when you're drawing. You always use the plumb line, which is a vertical line, and what we call the level, which is a horizontal line. So I'm always checking my boundaries, closing one eye, extending my arm, putting a vertical line there, and see that the first part that touches is the bottom part, here, and then this part comes in slightly. And that's what I see on both sides. I put my angle there and they both come out. Now, emphasize the folds of the cloth. Okay, I am ready now to start adding some contrast, some lights. So far I've used vine charcoal and charcoal pencil. Now I'm going for my white soft pastel. So I like to have a sharp point. It always comes rectangular like this, but with time I like to have it with a point on it. Now I'm squinting to see my highlights. And this is where I'm really going to be blending. My light is from my right side, so this side is going to be very illuminated. So I'm going to start illuminating that part. Remember, this has been stained with your black pastel or dark gray pastel if you don't have black. <clears throat> now, another thing, if for whatever reason you don't have any of this, you still should start on the drawing and start by using pencils.
one suggestion I have for all of you is when you look at anything, if you have a confusion, try to use your zoom lens. And that helps a lot because it eliminates excessive information. Remember, remember this, if you start to lose your shapes, you have to recuperate the shapes of shadows and the shapes of lights. Work in a little bit of cast shadow here. I'm sure that some of you might be wondering, how long will this take? Well, it's hard to answer that because each one of us draws differently. Some people draw very quickly. I'm a slow drawer, so it may take me two hours, three hours to do this, but some of you may be faster and um, it varies. One very important thing, even though shadows have a shape, just like light may have a shape, your shadow as it pulls away from the object gets fuzzier and weaker. So it shouldn't have a strong outline towards the end. It should be slightly blurry or fuzzy. with pastels always wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty because you will get dirty so I am working on my cast shadow at the same time and that will give me a little bit of volume as I'm working on my lights, I will also uh, 
be thinking about contrast because that is the name of the game here. Contrast. I'm going to draw my shadow on top the negative shadow on the wall. One important rule to remember is that wherever there is shadow, there will be light. There cannot be light unless there is shadow, vice versa. So one thing affects the other. At the edge of that shadow that we're seeing, we see at the top very strong, and then as it pulls away, it's gonna get weaker here. So I have to make the top stronger Now in those places where it's very tight, the folds, it must be darker. <laughs> 